the nigga Puff was like, yeah, like first he was amping him to, to right. get stout. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we could just hang out, nigga. We gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Puff. Okay. He telling me we gotta kick it and shit. And he was like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or some shit? I mean, like after I round, guys, because it looks like Fifty Cent finally got his hands on those Diddy freak off tapes. And he's now exposing Rick Ross for being one of Diddy's freak off partners. I mean, we didn't really think Diddy was in there using all those bottles of baby oil on himself. He had to have some partners. However, 50 Cent just confirmed that it goes much deeper than we think. And he's been working behind the scenes to expose all the rappers who used to attend Diddy's wild baby oil parties. And this time, 50 isn't just doing it through social media posts. He's working with Netflix to make a docu-series that will finally unravel decades of Diddy's freak-off enterprise. And trust me when I say, y'all are not ready for the crazy waves this is gonna cause. But is Rick Ross really one of Diddy's freak-off partners? And is 50 really about Diddy and his harem of rappers? Let's break it down. So, 50 Cent has been exposing Diddy and his freak-off partners for a hot minute now. But everything got messier when he dropped the bombshell that Rick Ross is one of the rappers Diddy likes to get oily and sweaty with. He first spilled the tea in a post where he shared some disturbing lyrics from a Rick Ross song titled UENO, where Rick bragged about doing some wildly inappropriate stuff with women like it was a flex. He said, 50 posted multiple pictures of Rick Ross and Diddy along with S's screenshot of those lyrics on his Instagram page and captioned it. What the F? At some point, you just gotta do the right thing. That was all the context people needed to figure out that 50 was trying to expose Rick for being one of the rappers involved in Diddy's freak-off lifestyle. However, that wasn't the only time Rick rapped about doing shady stuff like that. He has been out here rapping about taking advantage of women and getting away with it. In his song titled Magnificent, he outrightly rapped about witnessing Diddy take advantage of a girl group called Total that was signed to his record label at one time. He rapped. Now, this was shocking for sure, but a lot of fans didn't believe it because Rick just didn't have that fruity image 50 always says Diddy has. Well, everything kicked up a notch when Rick Ross's own baby mama, Tia Kemp, joined the chat and backed up everything 50 Cent was saying about him. Just a few days ago, Tia dragged her baby daddy and his entire family through the mud because, apparently, they had been getting on her nerves for a minute. But they should have known better because Tia is the queen of petty, and she wasn't holding back at all. She started by exposing Rick Ross for putting a hit on her. According to her, the hit only failed because the people that he paid to take her out ran off with his money and warned her that he had put a price on her head. So we better clock this tea right here. Renee, since you want to stay keeping up shit, we better talk about some real tea. Your brother over there paying people to put s asterisk 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 out. He over there paying people to put s asterisk 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 out. And n asterisk 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 s running off with his money and it's getting back to me. So now, now, I'm finna send the feds over there to y'all mother f asterisk 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 empire. See, you had the right bitch today, ho? You keep playing with me. I'm finna tear y'all mother asterisk 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 empire down. Rapping about sending goons after your ops is one thing, but taking that to real life and against the mother of your own child. That's crazy levels of messy. Somebody needs to lock this man up for good because Tia wasn't even done exposing him. She name dropped other people that Rick had gotten rid of, including a woman named Miss Carol, who, surprise, surprise, died under very mysterious circumstances. Oh, the police also never figured out what really happened to her, and they're still trying to put the pieces together. According to Tia, what really happened was that the woman was Una lived on her way home by Rick and his crew. But Tia didn't stop there. She brought up another man who she claims was Una lived by Rick in front of one of his properties called the Black House. Next, we gonna talk about Miss Carol. Y'all know who Miss Carol is. You know that's behind your brother. I'm finna make sure her family sue y'all whole estate. Cause that case is not closed. You know the lady that was leaving from my mama's house getting her hair done that time? And it's behind your brother and his drama? You know that. You know. You know. 
about the man who was in front of Black House. Okay. We finna dig up a whole bunch of motherfucking maggots right now. I'm not finna play with you, you old simpy be asterisk 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 asterisk. I'm finna finish y'all. Watch this. But why would Rick put a hit on her in the first place? Well, according to sources, it's because she was threatening to release his Diddy Freak off tapes to the feds. In fact, there were rumors that Tia was already talking with the feds, and they were already working on getting her into witness protection. It's prom time. You ain't seen shit since December 9th. But I'm not finna play with you. I'm not. You gone make me come to the gate. Been in Miami a lot. Cause you ain't got no motions. It's slowing down. I heard. I heard. I'ma get you, Will. I'ma get you. University. -er. And if you keep sending mother just around, that's getting back to me. Come over here and tell it all. You be toe your toe in next. You know what I'm talking about. And your mama won't answer. Tell her respond. Hit me up and say hi. However, this wasn't the first time Tia was exposing Rick Ross for being one of Diddy's boy toys. Back in March, when Diddy's houses first got raided, Tia went ballistic on Rick on IG Live, exposing him for being one of Diddy's partners. She claimed Rick was scared out of his mind because of the raid, so much so that he ran to Miami to keep a low profile so the feds wouldn't come for him next. According to Tia, Diddy has many tapes of Rick Ross doing the nasty at them freak off parties, and the feds found everything when they seized Diddy's electronic devices. Now I ain't gonna let off here. You should have been shut this big mouth hole up. You know it. You know it. Sip your fruit basket. You know what I like. Coconut water hole. Hole one. Drill a hole in it and put a cane straw in it for me. Farmer's market on Griffin Road. You know where to go. I'm not fit to play with you no more by my asshole. You playing games. Get on your knees and repent. Cause if you send another message out here, I'ma have first 48 hit you up. You bad. You scared of jail, huh? You scared of jail. Remember? You remember? You was in that crowd for that quarter Chinese fire right trying to pay a god five caper. When you was in them couple weeks. You don't want no pressure. Keep playing. Keep it on. I can't wait to see you in the headlines. All you do is brag and talk about it. Oh, Tia was really lashing Rick Ross and you know she's not one to mince words. See, Rick Ross and Diddy have been friends for a very long time and they've been photographed. At several parties together. 50 even shared some pictures of them almost locking lips on stage during a performance. Chilly, they weren't even trying to hide it. Around the same time, the interrogation video of the man who shot up the Trump National Hotel back in 2018 started going viral and he was making some bold claims about Diddy and Rick. He claimed that he was one of Diddy's freak-off slaves and even name-dropped some of the men who used to come around for a nice time. He mentioned DJ Khaled, Big Sean and of course, Rick Ross. The man even spilled the tea about how it didn't matter to Diddy and his freak off. Partners when he caught STDs as long as they could their pound time in. Um, I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would tell me what to do with Cassie. I had like 15 encounters and I heard lots of business because what they would do is. Sean talks a lot on the phone and on the TV with people and stuff and I would be in the. I was like a slave, okay. For them, that's what I was. That's all. Alright? Um, I caught it and I came back and I seen it for a reason. It was war. But they didn't. Mark Gary Ross and Ben Mercedes were equal. Okay? Boys. Okay? They were gay. Who? Both. Diddy and Ross. And Khaled. They were all gay. DJ Khaled and Rick Ross. And he did it? Yeah. They all gay? Gotcha. All right. Now y'all remember how Diddy had to step down from his position as CEO of Revolt TV. When Cassie's lawsuit first went viral? Well, 50 was the first at the scene, trolling Diddy and having a field day with it. 
He even offered to buy Revolt TV from Diddy on his Twitter page where he posted the announcement. Along with the caption, I'll buy that from you Playboy for the low because you know Cadillac and AT&T gonna pull out. Then we can be friends. I'm serious. Call my phone. Fans were just losing it when 59 made this post, and they couldn't get over how much. 50 was keeping his foot on Diddy's neck. When Charlemagne the God later sat for a chat with Andrew Schultz, he called 50 Cent, a diabolical genius, for wanting to buy Revolt TV after Cassie filed her lawsuit against Diddy. Rick Ross initially tried to ignore everything, but then 50 trolled him and his fellow Diddy. Boy Toy Meek Mill, in a tur video he posted on social media. At this point, Rick couldn't take the disrespect anymore, so he hopped on live to clear 50. For talking smack about him and also addressing Charlemagne's comments. This rubbed a lot of people off the wrong way because it looked like Rick was more concerned about Diddy being disrespected than he was about all the other disturbing accusations against Diddy. It would turn out that there was a perfectly good explanation for why Rick reacted that way. He and Diddy were basically two peas in a pod. However, Rick Ross is just one of the male rappers who have been accused of being in Diddy's freak off tapes. We also have Meek Mill, who has been making the headlines for being one of Diddy's DL boyfriends. Around the time the accusations against Diddy first started rolling in, people started taking a closer look at Diddy's friends, and it didn't take long for old videos to start resurfacing, showing Meek in interesting situations with Diddy. For example, there's this footage that has been making the rounds, where Meek appears to be cooling his behind in the pool while Diddy calls him daddy. Then there's this footage of Meek doing the bunny hop with billionaire Michael Rubin, who is also known for hosting wild substance-fueled parties, where there's no limit to the kind of depravity that can happen. Oh, and yeah, you guessed it, they're all besties with Diddy. When that video of Meek doing the bunny hop went viral, people started dragging Meek for filth, accusing him of performing for his freak-off partners. Meek quickly jumped on Twitter to debunk the allegations. He quoted one of the accounts posting the headlines, saying, Do a history check. Me and NBA players I know was playing this game, and we all was posting it. The plan was to actually make a billionaire bunny hop, but I lost. The media used that as a focal point. Did everybody forget, or is it because it's a white man? He then made another tweet, saying, this is a game I started from prison. We used to make killers do bunny hops when they lose because it was too hostile for money. This be us. Emma get Ruben to bunny hop for me, okay? Emma teach him the tang hop. Chili. That only made people troll him even harder because putting prison and bunny hop in the same sentence is hella sus. Me came under attack again recently when a very disturbing footage went viral that was supposedly about him getting taken to Pound Town by Diddy. The audio is very intense, so we won't play it here, but just think of the worst thing you've ever heard and then multiply it by two. After the audio went viral, one man came forward to take responsibility for leaking it. According to him, he was at a party with Diddy and Meek Mill, where everyone was passed out from drinking the spiked drinks they were given. According to him, while everyone was still passed out, he started hearing noises coming out of one of the rooms there. He decided to record it and then release the footage when he learned the two men were Meek and Diddy. However, according to Jaguar Wright, that story is just a load of BS Jaguar claimed that. This man was paid to claim credit for leaking the video, but the truth is, it was Nikki Minaj who actually leaked it. She said the reason why Nikki didn't want to come forward personally was that she didn't wish Meek or Diddy to send goons after her. But now that Meek and Diddy were getting exposed anyway, she thought it was fair game. Since he was a kid. Oh man. And if Milk running well, talking about expensive pain. No, wait, this is Philly. You're talking about that. Wait a minute, Jay. Me. Wait a minute. He's a fruit loop. He did. He fired. This is Philly. He's a deep fried. He did. He fired. He did. He fired. He did. 
Me. Real. You think the audio that they put out was real? That was. Nikki put that up there. That Nikki recorded that at the freak off in the Calabasas. She'd been waiting to drop it on Meek. She just wasn't gonna tell nobody it was Diddy. But now that Diddy out there, why not? Now, of course, you can always count on 50 Cent being on the scene whenever there's anyone. Even remotely connected to Diddy being trolled. And with Meek, 50 did not hold back at all. In fact, things got real heated when 50 trolled Meek for defending Diddy and his son, King. Combs. He wrote, You sold 6,000 copies your last project. You should not be on vacation. Still chasing the dream or embracing the nightmare. Standing by your man. That I respect. Not calling Diddy Meek's man. 50 really be out here making jokes. But he wasn't done yet. He posted a video of Meek and Diddy with the caption. I commend you for being a strong, supportive woman for your man Meek. Stay by his side and together you guys may have a good life. The video 50 posted was this one where Meek and Diddy were at a party wearing matching. Outfits. Meek was singing about some girl and Diddy damn near had a whiplash when Meek got to. A certain part of the song. Yeah. 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 Meek wasn't having it though. He fired back at 50 in a post where he said. He then continued saying. These the dudes y'all look up to. These people that destroy black families and success like bad cops. I don't find him funny. I see him as a rich parasite. Dudes be rooting for dudes to go to jail and claiming he's from the street. Emma start bombing on y'all. This exchange started after 50 trolled Diddy's son, King Combs, for releasing a diss track. Against him after Homeland Security raided his daddy's homes. 50 referenced King's own case where he was sued for blanking a woman on a cruise ship. And said, Meek jumped to King's defense saying, Meek Mills spending days fighting for his life because people called him Diddy's boy toy. And then spending even more days online defending Diddy is just something no one can prepare. You four. But guys, 50 Cent just up the stakes for this Diddy saga because he has been coking. Some things behind the scenes that are going to leave fans shocked for days. Okay, so remember when 50 Cent first said he was trying to get his hands on the tapes Lil. Rod claimed Diddy had in his lawsuit? He shared a post of that section that read, Mr. Combs had hidden cameras in every room of his home, has recordings of several celebrities. Artists, music label executives and athletes engaging in illegal activity. These individuals were recorded without their consent. Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person who has attended his freak-off. Parties and his house parties. 50 then added the caption. Initially, fans thought 5-0 was just trolling, especially when he shared this poster for what looked like a Diddy docuseries. Well, it would turn out that 50 was actually pretty serious about getting those tapes sent, using them to make a documentary about Diddy. He recently announced via Variety that he has been working with Netflix to produce a Diddy documentary and it will be getting released soon. In an exclusive interview with the magazine, 50 said, While the allegations are disturbing, we urge all to remember that Sean Combs' story is not the full story of hip-hop and its culture. We aim to ensure that individual actions do not overshadow the culture's broader contributions. Baby 50 Cent is about to shake up the industry with that documentary, and the fans are totally here for it. One said. Another said. He was prepared and trained for this moment. He doesn't give a f about anything more than seeing Diddy sink. But do y'all think 50 really wants to do good work with this docuseries, or is he just using it to chase clout?
comment down below and don't miss out on this next video.